So I finally got uh, Camtasia installed on my computer, which is uh, it's quite exciting. I have no idea how to use it. A lot of people have asked me how to how I do my speed paint and general how do, how do I paint in general. Uh, so as you can see, I am um, using a big fat brush, and the way I would describe it is more like uh, like sculpting than actually drawing. I'm trying to find a shape that I like. Um, so this, the theme was uh, hippo, uh, hippo rider crossing the river. So I thought of this knight uh, standing on a, a hippo on his back and then crossing the river and maybe a bit of action, kind of fun image to do. Uh, I was thinking that the hippo could be looking at us. So I don't use photo, uh, like as, as in copying a photo um, and then you know, paint my stuff over it. Sometimes I would do that, we do that when I, when I was a professional. Now I'm a teacher, but when I was looking working in the professional world, you have to paint over photos and things like that. But I personally like to go with the, the world of imagination. So I uh, I look at photos of hippo just to refresh my memory of what they look like, you know, from the back, uh, the, the mouth, all that stuff. But then I close them and then I start painting from imagination. Uh, this this is how I get the most satisfaction personally. That's why I like these speed paints because you go into your crazy mind and just let things happen. <clears throat> So as you can see there, uh, it's like sculpting. So yeah, I put big, big, you know, bits of clay or whatever, thick stuff, and then I erase slowly, trying to keep it as big as I can, and then slowly um, adding details so that I can need to put the eyes somewhere so I know where he's going to look. Uh, it's going to be his eyes there, and then it's going to be his mouth, uh, his nose, famous Ibo nose. There's a guy on the back. You can see he's pretty rough at this point. And I know I'm not, I'm not going to paint the uh, uh, the back legs, so I purposely don't worry too much about them. Uh, I saw that my image was a bit too big inside this square. Uh, advantage of Photoshop is you can move things around, as everybody knows. Uh, and you can, you know, warp and do all these kind of cheaty things. <clears throat> of course, when you have to draw everything by hand, you have to be a little more focused and know where you're going. So you would do a bit of sketching and stuff. Uh, here you just sketch directly, you just dive into it and make it happen. Now this um, this hippo there is going to be kind of goofy and looking at us, but you know, it looks like it's a, it's a real scene from some fantasy uh, silly novel somewhere. So I want him to have like a character, an expression, so that's why I paint. It's a slightly caricature way, if you will, it's not completely realistic, it's a bit exaggerated. And what I'm really interested about in, in most of my paintings is movements, is, is life, you know. Uh, I know that a lot of people are impressed by an image that is detailed, top to bottom, left to right. But um, personally, I, I like that people can do that, and I, I can do that if I need to for professional reasons. But um, when I'm left to myself, I like to, to leave everything to imagination. You know, the less you put in, the better. Big brush strokes. And hopefully people, you know, fill in the blanks and just go crazy <clears throat> with their own imagination. So, because as soon as you start detailing, then an image starts to get stale a bit. And then you have to use FX, like speed FX and all these uh, Photoshop FX to make it move. Now, there is a place for everything. Of course, when you're a professional, they want you to, they want you to detail these things, you know, perfectly. And, and I want to see Tom Cruise in that armor, you know, fighting this battle right there in this mountain. That you know, we paid for this suit, and I want to see the exact suit, etc. Uh, <clears throat> so you, you have to obey the, the hierarchy. So as you can see there, you can see my my knight coming up. He's got like a, a lance, and he's looking back at us. He's pulling on the rein, and the, the hippo is starting to look like a hippo. So this is getting uh, quite cool. Uh, still getting it as thick, yeah, as big brushwork as I can, and as as fast as I can, and not not overthinking. Sometimes you need a straight line, so I use this tool, the, this uh, selection tool, just to get a bit of a, a straight line here and there. I see I made a mistake. Oh, I need to erase that. Um, <clears throat> I still don't know how the helmet's going to look like, but you see the. The tiny amount of detail there on the, the eyes and ears of the, the hippo and his tooth, you can see his face. Uh, 
as little brush stroke as you can think of. And same thing I'm going to do with this guy. I'm just going to put a bit of light on top and a bit of shadow right over. Um, paint at the back, a little bit of light at the front of his leg. So there you go. Now you can see the guy, you can see the hippo, and you can see the, the fold, the crease in the, in the, in the, uh, the neck, and then all these things. Uh, he, he's got some kind of, uh, I don't know how you call that, some, some kind of system to, to hold the hippo. Uh, and so now you have um, uh, all these things happening. I'm getting very slowly into detail, but still using quite a thick brush, you know, and, and basically detailing by, by painting the color that's on the other side. I'm, I'm just using black and white at the moment, so it saves times. As people who have done the speed paint know, it, you really, really don't have the time to fiddle around. So colors I keep to the end. Uh, I don't always do that. You know, sometimes I will start with colors. Sometimes I will put a splash of color and start with that, or a background, flat background, or, or a gradient or something. Uh, but here I, I started black and white because I had an idea for the, the general shape. It's all about negative space and positive space here. Yeah. Attitude. So this guy is, is a knight and he's looking at us. Yeah, it's getting a little more precise, but not not too detailed yet. And I, I would purposely leave some of the, the details uh, out of hand here, you know, so leave them completely blurry and, and just leave the, the mistakes I make because I, I find the mistakes somehow they bring more life to an image. If you, if you start to correct absolutely everything. It looks like these uh, hyper polish uh, piece of concept art, uh, which I love. I mean, it's not, it's not a judgment on me from anybody because everybody has their own talents and can do whatever they want. Uh, for my for my personal taste, I like uh, a bit of um, I don't know, leaving it to imagination and freedom. Obviously, you could uh, take this image and do uh, like a fully really rendered image, you know. Uh, render all the, the armor details and all that stuff, and it'd be fun too. And it still keeps a lot of life and be quite interesting. But for the purpose of these speed paints, you have to get all that in 30 minutes. <laughs> and so uh, I like that. It just uh, it forces you to go into this uh, this really um, uh, the essential. You know, no details, just the shapes, the uh, distance, the depth, the composition. Bit of color and that's it. Uh, uh, some people are really, really good. They have. I have to say that uh, th this computer that I'm using doesn't have my best brushes. This is my work computer. That's why I, I managed to get uh, them to install Camtasia. <laughs> I could, my computer at home has better brushes, but it doesn't have Camtasia, and it. Uh, I have to pay for it, which I don't. And this is uh, my university thing. Um, they. The, Computer at home would crash as well. It's terrible. It's a Mac, but it, as soon as I put QuickTime and start to paint, it just goes, slows down. Uh, you, if you you just paint one brush stroke and it goes very slowly and then it stops and it's, it's miserable. So I try several times and then I thought, no, okay, uh, I have to wait till I have either a better computer or I can afford Camtasia or something. But I think a better computer because it's really, really you know, slow and crummy. Uh, a lot of the time I have to restart it. I was working in, uh, in production you know, on some movies. Uh, I was working on, on Thor, uh, for example, at Chapton. I was working on my computer, that computer, and it was so slow. Every time the director would come in, I had to. I, I knew he was going to come in the afternoon, so I had to restart the computer just before he came, make sure it wouldn't crash in front of him, because it was really annoying to have all these people standing and you can't show anything because it's just stale as hell. Uh, anyways, oh yeah, painting a bit of background. Uh, this is a trick, Photoshop trick. Just put the paint over everything. Oops, made a mistake. The image gone. And just uh, uh, make put that layer on multiply so it will be behind the guy. Uh, so using this custom-made brush that I got from I don't I can't remember. See, now oh, the stuff is behind him. A little suggestive, you know, there's, there's nothing now. You, you see a shadow with some waves at the bottom, you see some dust, and you see exactly what's going to happen. The brush, foreground, the, 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 uh, the shape of the rock, by the way, is, is uh, it's on purpose, all that. It's, it's, uh, I see a painting as, as you would do music. For example, uh, 
the shape of the hippo and the shape of the rock and the shape of the head of the, the helmet and all these things they rhyme together like like a piece of music you go into this, this sort of a, a deep thinking about uh, uh, design ethos and things like that uh, that that's the thing i gained from years of working in films and stuff like that it's uh, it comes naturally now, but I struggle for a long time to see what's why isn't that working? This is not working. This is not working. And it's because the shapes are not working together for some reason. Uh, you can over intellectualize all these things, but the best thing to do is to just uh, go with your instinct. Yeah, you know, keep moving, keep painting, changing things. As you can see, I have a lot of brushes. Some of them I got from people at work, from a custom made that I made for a movie. Um, uh, some from downloaded online and things like that. This is uh, uh, CS, CS5, I think. Yeah, CS5. So some of the latest brushes could not be uh, downloaded and installed onto this one. Um, uh, yeah, you can see I'm still resizing the stuff. It's quite a lot of movement. I'm quite happy. And I made sure that the image is uh, like slightly imbalanced. So on the left, you see this big white space. Uh, which is almost empty, and then on the right is quite busy, and this guy is going towards the left. Uh, I will flip the image for a while because I, <clears throat> even though I paint in this direction, I, I thought in the other direction it, would, it was more dynamic. Um, well, this is a thing that most of us do. We flip the image around endlessly until we, we like what we're doing, and we can correct the defaults, the problems, the mistakes, etc. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm still trying to paint the, the legs, but I'm still trying to keep the brush stroke quite big because I don't want this leg to be hyper detailed. If I start detailing it, uh, I, like I say, I, I can detail things to a quite high standard, but uh, this, these images are not about that. They're about this guy's jumping into the water and he's turning and looking at us, and you have 30 minutes to do it now. <laughs> uh, so, like I said, there's no model, no no, no reference. I'm just painting, you know, just pure imagination. Uh, the, the advice I would give to people is to, uh, to do what I do. If you want to do an imagination piece, just look at images, you know, fill your brain as much as you can, uh, and then when you're ready, just go and you know, put all these this stuff into your head so that you, you have it fresh. Like uh, I can paint from memory something that's quite quite reasonably uh, that, that looks like the thing that I was looking at. Uh, if you leave it for two hours, then it, it will disappear. If you leave it for several days, your, your memory will, you know, very, very quickly, it will disappear. So you need to have a, a lot of culture and know all these, all these things, how uh, horses and elephants and all these things work. They're pretty much the same, the qu quadrupedal creatures. Uh, but you know, of course, the proportion of difference for, for the hippo, for example, and belly has to be quite thick, and the legs are tiny, and the heads are huge, and all these things I grab from the photo and you know, just just fill my brain so, so as much as I can. And I do that all the time. I look at things, I look at houses, I, I look at cars, at people's heads. You know, I get in trouble sometimes. What are you looking at? You know, stuff like that, because I, I just sort of uh, create a, a memory of things in my head. Um, and then I can draw. Um, I'm not at the level of some people who can really uh, you know, recreate the world with just a piece of paper. But I'm, I have that much. I have a lot of imagination. I can go close to that if I want to. Uh, it will not be hyper real, but it would be. It will look like what it's supposed to look like. But of course, a hippo you, you don't draw often, so it's good to have a look at uh, photos and, and films or YouTube films or whatever. So you really refresh your memory. You know, if I had to draw, I don't know, it's, uh, so some animal that I don't draw often, like a, a platypus or whatever, I'll have to look at it just to remember, and then then I'll paint it. Yeah, I thought of doing a bit of a, a FX. Let's see, I've got this brush. Uh, this brush I made, I think, this this uh, grass brush there. I tend to not use too many brushes. Uh, this is an exception. This image has four or five brushes, but generally I try to do almost everything with two brushes max and one if I can yeah, so you, you don't lose time so now you have a bit of depth you have the, the foreground elements you have uh, the mid ground which is the hippo and then the trees and the stuff in the background 
it's very hazy and all that. So at this point, it's about well, I don't know, like like sixty percent done. You know, after that, I'm just uh, putting a bit of black lines here and there to precise some of the details and to emphasize what I I want people to look at. So it's, the, the way you sculpt and the way you put lights is the same thing. You, you put middle light and you darken areas and you lighten areas and, and progressively you, you get, you sculpt it in, you know, you, you make sure that what is, what is bright gets brighter. What is, you know, where you want the eye to go, and make sure. So yeah, I flipped the image. Uh, so, okay, this, this is okay. Uh, there's a lot of stuff behind him, but that needs to move. It's quite heavy right now. Maybe a bunch of branches here in the same direction of the, the whole image. We have this per perpendicular stuff. Oh yeah, some uh, some little bits of things flying off. I was not so sure about this helmet, so I just kept on thinking about it while I was painting something else. Uh, and it tried to get a, a grasp of the whole image, not get bogged down into one corner and just detail just that corner until you until you forgot what you were doing and then everything else is not at the same level and it will take you 20 years to finish the whole thing uh, and it will look ugly so if you paint everything all at once uh, you know, sometimes at the top of the, the helmet sometimes on the tail sometimes here you have a vision of the whole thing you know, the, how it works uh, right here I think I'm going to um, put a bit of distance between the, the hippo at some point I'll put a bit of a Oh, yeah, I was trying to use my color thing and it wasn't working there, so losing time. The shortcut was not working. Uh, most of us have shitty computers. This is not a shitty computer, but it's um, got its problems. Uh, so I had to go up in the menu and uh, put color by hand. And say you lose a bit of time doing that. Yeah, color, I'll just put whatever. Uh, color on a multiply, so I have a base color as strong. Reduce it a bit. So now I got a weird pinkish color, which is not the color I want to go at the end. It's, it's, it's just a random color to start thinking about color. And then uh, I had to find where is the uh, level thing, which normally uh, I know the shortcuts, Control M, but here I had to find it because it wasn't working. The shortcut was not working. Now, where is it? There. There it is. Now, so this is the way I, I put colors. A little bit of a uh, Contrast and play with the red. I was thinking of something like orangey or uh, like a, it's a hot day, not pink. Yes, the other side. So by moving these curves very carefully, and uh, if you do a bit of a zigzag, you have really interesting things. And some of the clear color start changing hues. And, um, some of the yeah, so you can see there's a bit of blue inside the the hippo, and then the thing is orange. So it's, it's like it color is it's coloring it uh, for yourself and it's quite it's quite an interesting uh, trick yeah i'm gonna put a bit of dust there but a bit of light uh, right there because i want uh, i want this to be action you know action face but the hippo looks looks like a hippo you know uh, now are we like 18 minutes in so it's not too bad uh, getting well on time i think i did this image in uh, 28 minutes or something. I, I, I should have gone all the way and polished it up a bit, but uh, uh, I wasn't looking at time. <laughs> I thought, well, now it's finished, and then I looked, oh, I had two more minutes to finish it, but never mind. So, a bit of uh, lights here to so try and create a bit of depth between foreground and midground. Uh, it's all about uh, creating movements and depth, um, uh, putting more lights. Top of things that are closest to the light, direction of the light coming from the top left here. Uh, so those, all these things are just classic. From uh, so yeah, I paint a tooth, uh, paint a bit of the sea, the river, and a, a tooth, and then a reflection on the, the armor. Uh, same thing, you know, still a rectangular thing. It's, it's not a polish detail brush. It's a chalk brush, I think. Now I'm happy with that. I'm just going to merge all these together. So I've got a bit of depth coming in. Um, starting to put a bit more detail on that leg, the big fat bottom of our friend. Um, 
What am I doing? Oh yeah, trying to put some trees in the background there. Some trees here as well. So it's not just uh, just grass, but it's a bit of a landscape. So some kind of that could be anywhere, but uh, maybe he's a knight in Africa, and he's <laughs> or he's a knight in old Europe, and he's brought back this monstrous beast. So the landscape doesn't say anything, but it could be Africa, it could be Europe. It's just saying nature and a big river, uh, quite warm. And I'm putting big brush stroke because I know I'm going to make that blurry. So I'm going to use one of the Photoshop uh, trick, which is radial blur. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of tricks like that. Uh, I tend to try not to use that too much because if you do an image and you always use those things, people will find out and it's a bit boring. Uh, just, just try and vary the way you do things. So, but for this image, I planned that all along because I knew I, was, I wanted action. And you know, he's got his leg up, bottom is loose, lost in the dust, and he's just jumping into the water. And I erasing the the, the layer which has the radial blur. So the top layer has has the, uh, that, and underneath is the the layer with. Uh, no blur, so the middle part will be quite static. Uh, then I'm adding a, a bit of a like a orangey sky in the background. Um, bit on overlay, I think it's multiplied better. Now at this point, I'm just erasing some of that so that it's only the sky who gets the, this orangey uh, treatment. Uh, I, I wish I knew I had a bit more time. I would have polished it a bit more, you know. Make it a little more detail, uh, but I, I thought I was getting towards the end, so I was brushing. Uh, yeah, there you go. Merging all these layers, uh, but I thought I'll oh, still have a few minutes. I'll just uh, do what I can, what I what I can. A bit of detail here and there. A uh, bit of strong lights. Keep the keep the strong lights and the strong colors to the end. Don't uh, don't do it. Well, unless you, you have a, a strong idea to begin with. Oh yeah, I forgot about the rain. Like he, he has something in his mouth. Like, uh, 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 yeah, he's being, I don't have time to design that properly, so I just suggested a big square brush. It's not ideal, you know. You, I have a much better brush on my other computer, but it, it's still cool. I mean, it just says what it needs to say. A uh, bit of light on this armor. I didn't like the, the tooth there. I just to remove things, make it more mysterious. Uh, it's good to be a bit goofy, but at the same time, you don't want to be too goofy. Then people will uh, will not connect uh, unless it's a, it's a big joke. This this is kind of like a joke, but it's half serious. It's like yeah, it could happen. It could be. It could be this guy somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not just a, a comic-y, cartoony thing. It's, it's if you could, if you wanted to, uh, render that in a more realistic way. Uh, the, uh, the hippo is not too far off the, the actual proportion. Uh, his head is a bit big, and the, the guy is small. I don't know. You'd have to check that out uh, towards a, a real hippo. Um, yeah, see, so you got all these things. Uh, little details of the teeth and uh, uh, armor on the hands, things like that. Um, like now, uh, you know, it's still 24 minutes in, so it's, I must have had a look. Then I thought, uh, you know what, this um, this lance I've got in there is too small, so I'm just going to make it bigger. Uh, changing your mind uh, a lot is not a problem. You know, you need to. You're at the service of your image. You're not uh, the, the image. Not is not the the king. Uh, you you are the master of the image. If you've done something that it looks good, but it's too small, or it doesn't look good for the image, it looks good in general, but not for the image. You just redo it. Don't hesitate to break something. Your your best part of the image and redo it so that it looks uh, you know like it works and belongs to this. Uh, obviously, what what you see that is is me. Uh, um, I've got uh, I don't know several years of experience. It's not it's not the, um, my first thing. So I, I kind of have been there before. I made all these mistakes one by one. Yeah. 
Uh, this is the old unshop mask that everybody uses that and you can see that Craig Mullins and uh, you know everybody good good artists use that uh, yeah I wanted to put the punch up the sky and make it a bit like yeah that's it more like like really hot and the bottom is more muddy uh, so I just put that on a multiply layer and then start erasing uh, the top of the, the hippo there uh, and the, the the guy all right so the um what are we doing oh yeah just a bit of uh, <laughs> detail uh, he's drooling his bits of rock of mud flying off it's all done with this square brush so it gives it the style you know the uh, your your eye will know that the square brush belongs in there yeah because somehow there's a bit of a, a brush of a, a square brush everywhere so, anyways, there it is. Um, uh, this is the this is towards the end. Yeah, um, I'm just signing now. Just a little bit of a uh, time for signing. <clears throat> like I say, I could have gone, I think, a couple more minutes and finish it a bit nicer. Uh, but it's. Never easy. Also, when you're at work, there's always someone coming in asking you a question and doing this and doing that. So <laughs> you do what you can, uh, the time you have. That's it. So there you go, folks. This is a 30 minutes painting with some silly stuff. Mm -hmm.